good afternoon, good evening, whatever the case may be. I'm practicing different greeting varieties to see what fits. And this one I heard recently on a video pertaining to another subject and I quite liked it. So credit to someone else. However, I thought I might use it today and see if it works for me. I have yet to find an adequate warm welcome greeting to anybody that would be watching this video. So I'm still exploring. Um, we'll figure it out as we go. So welcome. What I've done here today is I have pulled out some of my Vandacious growing orchids which are potted up in Lekka with the self-watering system because I have to pull them anyway as we are expecting rain and then they go out of their masks. I put them on the shelf. If you've seen my real estate video, the shelves down by my Vanda rack. I put them there in anticipation for a good drenching. So while I was at it, I just thought, you know what, this is a good opportunity to just set them up and uh, have a look at some of them. So let's start with the little oddball out here. This is Angracum didieri. And uh, he's still quite young. Maybe, maybe can bloom next year, I'm not sure in an orchid top pot, the small version. And these are one of my favorite kind of pots for orchids that don't like their roots disturbed so much and it's doing quite well. Now that we have some root growth going, we also have some leaves looking a little bit more, uh, let's say they have a little bit more potential in them than the previous two leaves right here. And the roots are going down into the lava rock. It's small lava rock. And I have a little bit of microfiber around it because this one lives by the other Leonises that I have in a similar setup by, on my terrace, um, door, by my terrace door inside my dining room area. Also, I showed that area on the real estate video. So he's doing well. I missed him every morning from the top and then normally the tray is full, but because it's gonna get quite humid, we now have 70% humidity and it's only 16 degrees. I've poured the water out. He's had his water for today. He'll be fine. And here, next to him is Vanda Darwinara Blue. It tried to push out a spike for me last year, but it failed. So I think we still have a little ways to go. But it's doing well. It's been in this setup now for over a year and uh, had a little bit of setback. You can see the leaf here is not quite as big, but now it seems to be adjusting. It's totally rooted in and it will get a good, good drenching as well. You can see it's wet now because again, every morning I go around and I miss these guys from the top, no matter what's happening in the reservoir. I just want to make sure that the upper roots stay hydrated in case they haven't gotten down far enough yet. And here is Renanthera citrina, looking a little bit of bent out of shape. <laughs> so what I'm trying to do, I got it with this curve and I'm now placing it in such a way that the light is coming from this side to try and straighten it up. It doesn't make any difference to the plant, but just for aesthetical purposes. <laughs> um, and it's working slowly but surely. It's kind of writing, correcting itself again. It bloomed for me last year and it's gonna do it again. Look, I have a spike. This one was not included in my Easter bud hunt because I thought I would be cheating. It's not exactly budded out yet. But yeah, Citrina, very, very pretty, attractive flowers. I love them. Very, very dainty. And it's doing well in the pot as well. So hopefully there will be the rain shower that's predicted and it can get a good drench. And back here is a scruffy looking little thing that is absolutely not pot bound. And this is Ascacentrum Christensonianum. I have one root growing out the back there. 
So for my climate, yes, I suppose I should mount this. Um, I've seen them do super well on mounts, but I'm, the summers are too hot. I can't keep up, uh, I wouldn't be able to make it. So either way, maybe I got the wrong, I judged it wrong wanting to grow this plant. Maybe it won't make it even in this setup, but I know it wouldn't do well in the summer setup either. Uh, and that on a mount, it, it, it would just be too, no, and it would be too dry. I don't, 70% humidity here now sounds great. And that's only because it's like 16 degrees and we're anticipating rain. Normally in the summer I'm dealing with warm, sometimes hot winds, and it's super dry. So, eh, I hope I didn't misjudge my competency here with this one. But it's been with me over two years now. You wouldn't think so, but you know, it's growing, little leaves. And let's see what it does. I really would like this root to extend. If I could get this root here to grow, it's very reluctant, very slow. And get down into the pot, we might be onto some chance of survival here. But it's not like these leaves are dry. They look like they're dry and about to fall off, but they're not. They're okay. Keeping it shaded. This one next door is Ascocentrum ampulacea. Mine is a variety clone named Pink Dreamer. Not in, in the pot at all. It is super wobbly. So this one is going getting sprayed every morning and every like mid midday when I go around again and check and see if everything's okay. So I am worried about this one because it is exactly the same issue. On a mount, it wouldn't fare much better either. And I say that now with a pause, thinking how much sphagnum moss would I need to put around it, but then I would be afraid of the stem. I would be afraid of losing it to the, on the stem. But you see, even though it is in a very shaded location, it doesn't get direct sun. Look at how red it is. So maybe it's not absorbing the magnesium because, you know, I can't spray it enough to give it enough magnesium. Or it's possible, because it's the Pink Dreamer clone, that it is one of these darker ones. I mean, it's growing a new leaf. And it's doing actually quite well, despite not being in the pot. I suppose I could one day just, you know, lay it down <laughs> into the pot, like flat, have it pointing this way and get these roots in and then train it back up. That could be an option. Hmm. Huh. I might need to think about that a little bit more. I'd never thought of that until now. They're beautiful, beautiful blooms. Absolutely beautiful. So, here we have Vanda Christensoniana, or Vietnamica, or Vanda Vietnamica. Hasn't bloomed for me yet either. And there's my dog fetching again. But, uh, it's, it's, it's growing, it's got roots in the pot. I wouldn't say that it's uh, rooted in very well, but it's not an unhappy plant. So we'll see if I can get some blooms further down the line, maybe next year. We'll have to see. And then here's Monachica, Renatera Monachica. I, I feel really bad. <laughs> Finally, I have some buds and I forgot it in my Easter hunt in my Easter bud hunt. I filmed it, but I didn't include the clip. <laughs> so it might punish me now because look at those, these are look like they're not gonna make it. It produced a spike last year as well, but the spike uh, didn't do anything. It just promptly dried up. So it's possible it's just a very young plant and it's rooted in the pot doing well with the leka and the self-watering. And sometimes, because it's well rooted, sometimes I missed the top bit but not much not much because it's getting enough moisture from below so yeah unfortunately no oh, <laughs> this should have been included in my Easter bud hunt at least I think I'll get two maybe three blooms this year but we'll see we'll see what it does I hope now it doesn't sulk because I took it out of its location and dump all the buds <laughs> that would be something <laughs> Okay, and next door here we have Renantera or Renantanda. What have we got? Sunrise. 
This is uh, one I don't know anything about bloom wise because it's never bloomed for me. It likes the pot though. It's got the roots going down. No issues there. I think this one's actually quite funky looking because it keeps producing. Well, I say keeps producing, but look at these first roots, aerial roots. It can it built it uh, grew. They're like polar opposites, and then at the same time go down. They didn't make it. This was all before I potted it into the leka. But now you see it's been growing basil, cakeys on the bottom there, or plantlets. Which is amazing. I think there's like one, two, three, four, five. And uh, this one is now growing its own root. This one has roots going down, down. That's awesome. Some of the roots are starting to branch. So it's doing all right. Despite no blooms, there's progress and there's potential. So yeah. Let's see, at least the cakeys will cover up that stem at some point. Yeah, it's positive. It'll do something eventually. We'll just keep at it. And then I have here Vanda Chrysnetia, green light. Also quite well and doing quite well in its pot. I don't understand why one root dried up. I'm loath to pull it out and cut it because sometimes underneath the roots are still functioning, so I leave it alone. Still waiting for some blooms on this one as well. But it's bringing out lots of little cakeys. We don't have any bloom spikes. There comes another root right there. But it's a little cakey machine and meanwhile it's doing that. Well, I'm not complaining. One day it'll give me some roots. So like a little, just a little tour, a little qu quick look at who's going to get a total soak. They're going to be removed from the masks now. And then if the forecast is correct, let it rain. So I hope that this was somehow interesting. Another little look at another section of my collection. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And even Thierry says, it's time to sign off. See you next time. Bye.